Yes, we often say, good morning. So I want you guys to help me this morning with, with a little bit of behavior modification. After weeks and weeks of being told that sometimes I speed up in sermons, you guys are going to help me this morning. So if I speed up and I go from 30 miles per hour to 120, I want you guys to raise your hands. Okay? Can you guys do that for me today? Can we practice? Yes. One, two, three. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so the sermonic theme for today, we are on a series, and this is week two of The Underdog. Misery turned into ministry. Misery turned into ministry. Inglewood Barbie, a.k.a. Alita Clark, is a young sister who for 210 days feeds the hungry over on 22nd Street under the viaduct in Chinatown. Her gig is called Club 51. She brings music, she brings food, really good food, beverages, adult beverages, and gifts. And even more importantly, she brings a beautiful attitude to feeding folks who live in the elements. She's a drop-dead gorgeous woman who works as a janitor for her bread and butter by day. And once off, she serves the homeless, a word she hates, choosing instead to call them her friends. When it was cold last year, she put them in hotels and she has fought with police and the city workers to respect her friends and their belonging. It's a bit of a surprise to see this sister dedicated to those living on the streets. She is the only person I know in the city of Chicago who served a meal through COVID with no assistance from the government. For $125, anyone can sponsor dinner for one night to feed her friends. In fact, in December, our special offering will go towards her mission work. She will serve a meal every night, regardless of weather conditions, until April 20th. Inglewood Barbie has a story. She was a foster child. She considers herself someone that was thrown away. She was told she wasn't going to be anything in life. She was raised in a home where she was molested repeatedly by the son of her foster parents. Recently, she tried to reconcile with her foster dad, but that didn't work because he thought it was okay to invite the perpetrator over to her house. At 18, she found her biological mom and she wanted to save her mom, but her mom overdosed on drugs in the streets. And while she feels like she couldn't save her mom, she thought, maybe right here in this spot of pain, I can serve others. This week, a man who had been homeless and separated from his family, she helped him to reconnect with his brother. And on Instagram, you can see his brother arriving, him packing up his stuff, and his brother taking him home. Barbie is out there for all of her friends, no judgment prayed up and ready to cut a dance move with her friends. For the last five years, Alita Clark is changing the narrative of homeless people. They are human beings and she treats them with the utmost respect and love. As the Open Breakfast Church, I don't have to tell you all because we know that the word says, whatever you do for the least of these, you do unto me. Inglewood Barbie does what the church is supposedly called to do. And like most of us, her friends respond favorably to love and kindness. She says whether they kick the habit or they don't, it's really not her place to judge. She just wants to be out there letting them know they are somebody, and if they ever want to change, she's there to support them. She also has six safe houses she uses as warming stations and as food pantries. Alita says, I just got a thing for the underdogs because I just know how it feels to be one. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Here, Hannah is very much an underdog. In a world where women are contextually defined by their ability to procreate, Hannah has no kids. Her husband's other wife looks at a man and she gets pre pregnant 
as the expression goes. In other words, she has no problem getting pregnant. And because the husband loves Hannah more, the other wife uses this ability to get pregnant against Hannah. She taunts Hannah. She undresses Hannah. You know that person that knows your triggers, knows how to get under your skin? She makes Hannah feel incomplete because Hannah cannot have kids. She's that thorn in constant tension in her side. She looks to bring Hannah down a notch or two. Out of her own pain, this other wife hurts Hannah. You know, the saying goes, hurt people hurt people. Mean people mean mug <laughs> other people. Folks with issues bleed on others. What comes up from the inside often finds its way out. And an unfulfilled, jealous wife with lots of kids was toxic for Hannah. Hannah couldn't live up to the expectations of her role as wife and children bear. Sometimes it's hard to live up to other people's expectations of us. It's not for want on our part. We'd love to please them. But sometimes the bar is just too high. She didn't have any kids and it didn't look like she was going to be able to conceive a child. And her husband offers some trite, insensitive answer. Aren't I enough for you? For Hannah, it was much more than that. She could not get pregnant in a culture where that meant everything. In a world where barrenness was considered a curse. Only the birth of a child could complete Hannah. Day after day, year after after year, she had to live with a pain in her heart that would not go away. Her barrenness was an unsettled ache. In his book, Tony Evans, The Power of the Names of God writes, the worst turmoil of all often takes place in one's own soul. This happens when you can't seem to live with yourself when your pain, your anxiety, depression, and regret eat you up, leaving you with an unsettled ache. It was miserable being Hannah, miserable not being able to have children, miserable living next door to the other lady who could have all these kids, miserable praying to God year after year. You know when you pray and you feel like your prayer goes unanswered, miserable not getting the answer that she wanted, miserable not being pregnant, spirit crushing disappointment sat like an overcast over her head. Not being able to get pregnant is a source of tremendous shame for Hannah. She asked for a child for relief from her shame. She throws herself down and she prays to God in such a way that she's never prayed to God before. If you give me a child, I'll give that child right back to you. So desperate is she for a child that the child she desires, she gives back away. You know, Hannah was in a lot of pain. We don't talk about pain much, but people are in pain, real pain. You know, sometimes we can even see others, though we try not to, in pain. She was hurting. She was wounded. And there wasn't anything she could do about it. There's a lot of pain in our world right now. People are running on empty. People are upset, people are wound tight, people are stressed, and people are turning on people. And we have violence in our streets, so much so that I listened to one woman talk about being afraid to even leave her house. I listened to another lady the other day said she packs a fake purse on the premise that she might get carjacked. People are afraid, and people are tired, and some people are in real pain 
And Hannah, Hannah, Hannah was in real pain. Hannah was in real trouble. Hannah wants what she wanted. It felt like it was totally overlooked by God. My God, my God, don't, don't you see me? Hannah's desperate prayers, according to the Israelites, was answered. And this is where things can get a little bit dangerous. Often this text gets preached as the faith of Hannah. You know how it goes. Just have a little bit of faith and God will open your womb. And maybe God will open your womb. And maybe God won't. But there is so much more you can do if you never, ever get pregnant. You see, we live in a world still that defines us by what we do, not simply because we exist, not simply because we were created in God's image. We often ask people, what do you do for a living? Where did you go to school? What is your occupation? How do you survive? None yet. We still get hung up on the ability of people to produce. And this expectation is a bar simply some cannot meet. Hannah's good news is somebody else's pain. Hannah is given a boy, and Hannah gives the boy right back to God. She takes her situation as the underdog, and she uses it for good. Here, Lord, he's all yours. There's a unique place where we can all serve, and that's where it hurts the most. Carl Jung introduced the concept of the wounded healer, a wounded healer is someone who serves others, but it is really out of their own woundedness. It is really out of their own pain. The wounded healer finds a way to turn their misery into ministry. Like Inglewood Barbie, we don't run away from the pain because the pain becomes the backbone of serving others. Hannah says, hear God, he's all yours. On September the 10th, 1946, that's a minute ago, Mother Teresa was on a train ride when she received a message from God, come be my light. God begged her, I cannot go alone. And where did God send her? God didn't send her to London, you know, <laughs> on a Caribbean cruise. God sent her to Calcutta. And on the 21st, of December, she went to the slums. She visited families and washed sores from children's bodies and cared for old men lying sick and nursing women dying of TB. And there was lots and lots of pain, lots and lots of misery, so much so that in her later life, Mother Teresa felt her own self sinking. But here in this misery, she too discovered ministry. Back in the late 90s, I had set a goal of going to Senegal, Africa. I had two days left. I walked out of my home a little bit late and discovered the city of Chicago putting a boot on my car. This was not how I wanted to spend my money, not two days before taking off and heading to West Africa. Back in the days when I was young, I would come home at night, and you guys know how it is in Hyde Park. There would be no parking, <laughs> and I would park somewhere, and so I kind of got my fair share of tickets. So I was distraught to see that if I had been maybe two minutes earlier, I could have avoided it. I was distraught to see, and I went up to the guy and tried to talk him out of it, but he was like, I got to do it, ma'am. And there I was looking at this big, yellow, ugly boot. You guys have seen them on the car. But because that was my miser misery, I don't judge people with boots on cars. I don't ask them, how many tickets did you get? I don't say, well, why didn't you pay your tickets? I don't ask those questions, and I don't judge them, at least not to their face. I don't say, why don't you set up a ticket payment plan? You know why? Inglewood Barbie knows why. Because when people are in pain, they don't need our condescension. They need our comfort. The poor in Calcutta and the poor in Chicago need comfort. Hannah needed comfort, not the put down of the other wife. 
When folks are hurting and wounded, they need comfort, not questions. Consoling, not judgment. Compassion, not obnoxiousness. Folks need the hope and love of Jesus Christ. So when I see someone with a boot, I know what it feels like. I know the pain. And I know how to be present in that moment. The underdogs of the world know what it's like to be low on hope. When you get that boot on your car, you are low on hope because you already know the bill is high. The underdog knows what it's like to be out here alone. The underdog knows what it's like to have more against you than you feel like is going for you. And the underdog knows if God will do it for me, God can surely do it for somebody else. And if God can open up Hannah's womb, God surely can open the locked door for me. And if God can give a baby, God can give us new life. If you've ever been the underdog, you understand sometimes what people need is just love and patience. Just shut up. Just love up on them. Hannah's response was pray during their yearly visit to Shiloh for worship and sacrifice, Hannah leaves the festivities in order to cry out to the Lord at the tabernacle, weeping in her anguish. She vows to the Lord, if God gives me this son, I will dedicate him to the Lord, and he will be a lifelong Nazarite. Right in our midst this week and for a while, there has been crazy violence happening in our streets. Right here on our block was shooting this past Tuesday. And I remember Mr. Anthony at the town hall meeting saying, the police will not come until someone is shot. And the police came, and the news people came, and the older women came. It may not be on our lawn, but it's close enough. And I got to wonder, what do the people of God do with the misery? How do we respond? Maybe like Hannah, we need to cry and throw ourselves down in prayer. Maybe we need to work with and support others who are doing some kind of positive work in our community. Or maybe like Mother Teresa, we can feel called to be a part of the solution. But the urgency of our times calls for a response to the misery in our world. Not only the misery in our world, but sometimes the misery that is in us. We don't have to go to Latin America or do missions in Africa, because right here in our city and on our block, people are in pain and in need of kindness and love and patience in need of comfort. Right here on our block, folks need mental health services. Right here on our block, the presence of God's people is needed, not just to walk in the church on Sunday. Right here on our block, more prayer is needed than ever. Right here on our block, there is a need for activities for youth. Right here on our block, we need more church presence on our lawn, and a sign won't do it. God needs us to pray for sure, but God also needs us to respond to the misery on our block. There is plenty of work to be done on our block. So Inglewood Barbie says this about our mom. I wish I could wake my mom up and show her what I'm doing, but I can't. The pain never goes away. It took me two weeks to bury my mom because I didn't want her friends to know that she had relapsed and gotten high. I think of you every day, Mom. Two weeks after you died, I started Hugs No Slugs, and I've been grinding ever since. You wasn't a mom, but you were my mom. Drugs stole you away from me physically, but you never left my heart. I've never been ashamed of your addiction. I treat the friends good because of you. 
I just wish I was then who I am now. Maybe I'd still have you here. Inglewood Barbie is interesting because she has decided that if she couldn't help her mom, she could help someone else. She stayed right where misery is and bought Club 51. Good music, good food, and great people down on their luck. And she be jamming speakers and bringing hope to a people that may not feel as hopeful, treating them as queens and kings. Hannah responded in prayer, and we know it's a start, but we have to thrust our bodies down. We have to take lemons and make lemonade. We have to show our scars and our life lessons. Inglewood Barbie said, I learned what not to do from looking at my mom's life. Maybe somebody won't take a road because we expose our life, our story, our scars. Let's take our misery and make it a ministry. Let's come to misery and bring hope. Let's see the Calcutta and the Chicago's of the world and realize like Mother Teresa, we are needed there. Let's take a step out on our block and see all the ministry that awaits us. Y'all didn't raise your hands up today. <laughs> Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for being on this wonderful journey with us. We thank you that you continue to hold our hand, that our life is in your hand. We thank you for the grace and the mercy that you have shown to us. Help us, Lord, not to be sucked in by disparity. Help us not to be sucked in by the violence. Help us not to be sucked in by all the bad things happening in our world. But Lord, you call us to ministry in the midst of misery. Help us to bring hope. Help us to bring comfort. And help us to bring a whole lot of love to folks who are in pain. In Jesus' name, amen.